Now, how to connect to destiny helpers? Now we know three types of destiny helpers. How do I now connect if I want to connect? Number one, you must know how to associate. You must know how to associate with your destiny helper. That is number one, how to connect. And associating with your destiny helpers demands that you know how to speak. You know how to what? Church, you know how to what? To speak. I want you to say it. Let it sing. You know how to what? To speak. You know how to speak. There are people who come looking for prayer. And the first thing they say is hi to me. That's okay. There are some also who come and the first thing they say is hey. And I get offended. Because where I'm coming from, hey, is somebody who doesn't know you that is calling you hey, hey, hey. Or somebody calling you Iwe, Iwe. And you call somebody Iwe because the person is your friend. You say hi to somebody because the person is your colleague or friend. But if it is a father figure, an elderly person that has something you need, you don't go saying hi. You say good morning, sir. You say good afternoon, sir. You say good evening, sir. And it is so in our African tradition. It is so even in movies. When you go for an interview, you don't go, you say hi, and you take your seat. No. You greet properly. Are we together? Yes. You greet properly. Majority of us, the reason why we have influencers, we have spiritual connectors, and we have gatekeepers, and they are not impacting our life, is because of how we speak in their presence. Because of how we talk in their presence. If you have a husband who is beating you, sometimes it is not because the husband is abusive. Sometimes because the words that come from your mouth are too painful. The only way to retaliate is to give you a dirty slap. But I pray for you that from today, God will deliver you from abusive husband. Amen. Amen. Family, I said amen. Amen. There is a man by the name of Nabal that David fought for. And David sent men to him to say, according to the security we gave you, the time has come for you to also give us a blessing so I can give to my men who worked for you and for your servant as you came. And the Bible said, Nabal, whose Hebrew interpretation means a fool, foolishly spoke against David and sent word to David. And David upset, angrily took a sword and took his men of war. And they were on their way to go and kill Nabal. When Abigail, the wife of the fool Nabal, heard about it, she quickly ran, sat on her horse. And when she saw David, she fell at the feet of David. And the first thing she began to say was, Come with me. Come with me to the book of 1 Samuel 25. We may not be able to read the whole chapter, but start from verse 24. First Samuel chapter 25, verse 24. Verses 24. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Okay, so you see, she was already speaking. But then again, she pleaded with David and said, David, Please allow me to speak in respect, in honor. Please allow me to speak. Continue. Verses 25. Please let not my Lord regard this candle, Nabal. Uh -huh. for, for as his name is, so is a Nabal. So he said, please, don't even look at what my husband has done. His name means he's a fool. And as, I, as it is now, I'm telling you, my husband is a fool. Because his behavior shows that he's a fool. What is he trying to do? He is trying to calm the heart of the man who was ready to kill her and kill her husband. How to speak. Continue. And folly is with him. But I, your maid servant, did not see the young man of my Lord whom you sent. Continue quickly. Verse 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, 
and then let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. He said, the Lord has stopped you by bringing me to avenge yourself. Let God himself avenge you. And whoever has risen to fight you, David, even though you are not yet a king, let them become like my husband, Nabal. Amen. Hey, the woman chose her word so carefully that deliverance fell on David instantly. Amen. And the spirit of anger and judgment left him. Amen. Because at the end of the day, he put his husband down to make David feel important because David felt less appreciated. That's a wise woman. Amen. Amen. There are people in this church who feel it is their right that my prayer must work for them. If my prayer is not working for them, they must pick phone and start whatsapping and calling people. I have even gotten tired of swallowing. These days I don't even say amen anymore. Sit there. Am I God? If you don't say amen, am I God? Am I the one who created you? Am I the one who gives you the breath of life? If my prayer is not working for you, am I God? By the way, if it's not working for you, look for another church where it can work for you. Don't sit here and become a stumbling block and grip the Holy Spirit. And there are people who enter into my office for the first time, the moment they sit there, man of God, I have gone through every church. There are people who have eaten my money in the name of prophecy, in the name of prayer. And quickly I say, close your eyes, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, do it for her. Do it for him. And I get up. It ends there. The next time you are looking for me, I will not avail myself. Because I know that even you, as you have come, you have only come to test. You have not come to submit. You have come to test. There are people who submit, and there are people who submit fully. As you sit before me, you are now comparing me to other men of God whose prayer has not worked for you. What shows that even mine will work for you? And if it doesn't work, where will you take me? You don't know how to speak. Amen. There are people who are highly qualified and they lose their position. The reason is because of how they responded to an answer to a question. How they responded to a question. When their boss angrily spoke, how they responded back. When their husband or father-in-law or mother-in-law spoke, how they responded back. When their pastor spoke in anger, how they responded back. And the man of God said, eh, hey, okay. You have reached where you now have wings. Fly, let's see. Know how to speak. Your destiny helper can come all right. God can answer the prayer all right. But his hands will be folded. He will not open up to you. Because of how you... Because of how you... Speak. Know how to speak. Some relationships we have prayed for which has happened. And there are no more. The reason is not because of witchcraft. The reason is because of how you spoke. Some interviews you have gone to and they never called you back. You qualify all right. But the reason is because ha, you spoke. Speak as though you eat salt. Sense, wisdom, humility, love, kindness. Speak kindness. When somebody has something that you don't have, sometimes you have to make yourself like a fool. Are we together? Yes. Even though you are older than the person, as you speak to the person, you keep saying please. You keep saying please. Not because you are a fool, but because you need something they have. How you speak can determine whether somebody will release or somebody will hold back. Sometimes you don't have. There is a way you will speak to a person you owe and the person will understand. Sometimes you don't have. There's a way you speak to a person and a person also take you to the police. The way we... Most marriages that end up in one person killing the other, it's not because of the cheating, but because of what came out after evidence was presented. Say yes. I did it. I'm sorry. Can you give me another chance? But here you are, even though the evidence is there, you are still fooling the person. Say, ah, ah, I never did it. Ah, ah, I never did it. Ah, ah, I never did it. There's one of my daughters who said, man of God, God has used you to help me a lot. Before I used to sleep around. And I said to her, I already know. I have even told my wife. I even told my assistant pastor as well. 
because there was a day I was getting closer to pray for you. I saw everything. But it was so sensitive, I couldn't tell. Are you understanding me? Yeah. But the moment you stand before the man of God, and you are proving that you are holier than thou, meanwhile, the man of God has already seen just that God has not allowed him to say. And in times of need, such men of God, they will pray for you. Prayer will not work because the prayer is not coming from their heart. Because when you had the opportunity, you proved that you were too, you were too wise. You were too wise. Don't destroy your home by the way you speak to your spouse. Speak with love. Speak with humility. Speak the words of kindness. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, I say hallelujah. Amen. Don't get to a prophet and the first thing you ask of the prophet is help. Don't see a rich man as it is now. My son, Big John, says, Man of God, your prayer has worked for me. If you said this year we're going to have millionaires, I can tell you that I'm already there. And that was in the beginning of the year. And I stand here and I say things that God is using this young couple to do in the church and in my life. And then there are some church members who had literally after the church, they will go to Big John. The first thing you want to say is that, Big John, I have a need, help me. You don't know how to speak, oh. You don't know how to speak. Even if he has what it takes to help you, the next time he sees your phone ringing, he will avoid you. Because you, you are not applying wisdom. Amen. When you see a person that has something that you need, don't quickly go, please, please help me. Please, please help me. First of all, introduce yourself. They introduce themselves, and you realize that they are doing better than you. You say, God bless you. The grace is working for you. God is with you. I pray that God will continue to open bigger doors for you. As you begin to give them accolades, guess what? They will ask you, and what do you do? They've already presented themselves to know your problem. Amen. Eh? And what do you do? And in this case, you are broke. You are doing nothing. So now you have the opportunity to what? Present to them. Speak wisdom. If there is anything you should ask for, ask God to give you wisdom. When you speak to your bosses, when you speak to your superiors, when you speak to men that have gone ahead of you, you say things that will touch their heart. And I've not paid my children's school fees, and I've not even paid my rent. Every day you are releasing your burden upon somebody. They see your phone call, they will be running away from you. Sometimes you need their help, but then do their pain. Because integrity is not something you command. It's not something you demand. It happens naturally. 